and we pray hands together eyes closed dear God we thank you for today we thank you that you are going to teach us today we pray God that you give us understanding of your word that we may be able to put it into practice and become good children thank you God in Jesus name amen well, rise up on your feet and let's get to praise and worship the Lord. Uh uh, like uh uh, the way. Listen, it becomes easy every time I miss God then call. Spirit walk and talk every day no longer carnal. Every negativity side split then gone. People ain't been now forgetting where I came from. Call, set it all, set it right Never fall, be reminded of the dead coming to life like Lazarus Me chatty chatty song, but me happy happy more Like the happy party for, for Baby Jesus, baby Jesus I love you, I love you You are my savior, you are my savior Every day, every day Well you can Forget every other thing he did, but the best of all, don't you ever forget one thing that he beaten up, crucified, hung up on a cross, a rose up, powerful your name, he a calling. Nobody but he ever seen this hour, spread it up, put it up, add some concrete fire, shelling out the almighty leaves, da 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 da, my team. Baby Jesus, baby Jesus, I love you. Where the call the heart Look almost exactly will spit you out Kati kiti Kame kita kita Obu de Bu gende de da Hari Peta kita ball Peta peta ball Leave the dead road And join the narrow road Kati kiti Kati kiti Kame kita kita Peta join the narrow road
We get it. Quite a comot. We get it. Chiwatu. We get it. Quite a comot. Chiwatu. Comot. Chiwatu. Eh. Big up. Mammy Brown's boy. <laughs> yeah, well, today I'm excited to talk to you about a very great and lovely topic. It's about prayer. When I was still a young boy, I didn't know how to pray. I so much struggled about prayer. One time, I even asked Uncle Quack to teach me how to pray because I was just, just so struggling about it. I didn't know what it meant to pray. Not until I realized that prayer is simply to talk to God about anything. It can be good, it can be bad, but we let God know. And I also got to know that in prayer, when we talk to God, it's not just because God doesn't know about what we're going on, but he loves us so much that he wants to hear from us concerning that thing that we are having on our hearts. We let him know about it and he grants it. And also I realize that in prayer, when we pray, we end by saying amen. And it is even not about how long your prayer can be. It can even be just a word, letting God know about it. And we believe that he has heard and that he is going to grant it as children of God. So ever since then, I have loved prayer. And I know that you all as children are going to learn how to pray and also desire and enjoy prayer on a daily basis in your lives. 
When you pray, of course, you humble yourself. At some point, you can cover your eyes, humbling yourself, or you can even close them, bow your knees. Um, you can close your eyes. You can bow your head. All that is in acknowledgement of God. And I realize that it's a good thing to do that when you are praying. So as children, never fail to pray anytime, anywhere. Just call on God. Talk to him as a child. Well, that was it for me, for you today. Bye-bye. Hello, children of the Most High God. Welcome. My name is Vivian, bringing you the good news from the Lord. And today we are going to talk about something very interesting. We all know that this month is a month of prayer for the children. And today we want to talk about something very small about prayer. Do you know prayer? Do you know what it means? Do you even know how to pray? Some of us just go on and speak whatever you want. But there is something that you have to know about prayer. Who do we pray to? Do you know who we pray to? Many of us don't even know the person we pray to. Some of you pray to your mothers. Others pray to your fathers. But we all pray to the most high God. Do you know Jesus? Jesus is our friend. And today he wants us to know something about prayer. And we, got, we are going to look into the book of Philippians chapter 4. Do you have your Bible? Open your Bible and we are going to look into the book of Philippians chapter 4. Let us begin from verse 4. And this is how it goes. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious of anything, but in everything, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Some of us pray when you go to your bedroom. You say, Father, I don't know. I want a dress. I want shoes. Will you give them to me? But God is telling us, do not be worried of anything. In all the things you want, everything that you pray for, pray with thanksgiving. Pray when you know that God is going to give it to you. So today, I want us to pray for some few things. You know, our country, our world is not stable. So I want us as the children to pray for some few things. Many of us are not, in, are not in school. Some of us, mommy does not have food. Daddy does not have money. We need clothes. We need shelter. We need water. We need all sorts of things. Some of us are even sick. So I want us to humble ourselves and pray for all these things. Pray for our friends. Pray for our teachers. Pray for our schools. Pray for everyone, even those people at church, we are going to pray for them all. So I'll, I have some prayer requests here and I'm going to go through them one by one. And after we are going to pray at once. Okay? Are you ready? Number one. We are going to pray for children, families in Uganda and those around the whole world those that were affected by coronavirus. Number two, we are going to pray for schools, teachers, pupils, and candidates. You know, many of us now are not in school. We are all at home. Some of us are even studying on televisions. 
So today we are going to pray for our teachers. We are going to pray for our schools that the Lord will protect us when we are not at school, even when we go back. Number three, we are going to pray for our parents' work. Some of our parents are not even working anymore. They are now at home. So we are going to pray for them. Number four, we are going to pray for health. Many of our friends are not well. Some of us are sick, others have cough, others, others have flu. So we are going to pray for everyone who is not well. Number five, we are going to pray for our behavior. Many of you are not behaving well. Many of you are disobedient to your parents. But we are going to pray to the Lord that the Lord will make us very well behaved children. And then lastly, we are going to pray for the Lord to give us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. But before we pray, let us go through our memory verse two times and then we shall pray. Our memory verse says, Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Everybody, Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. And it says, do not be anxious of anything, but in everything through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. We are going to repeat that one more time and we shall pray. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. It says, do not be anxious of anything, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your requests made known to God. So all the requests I have read, we are going to tell them to God and God is going to work them out. Everybody, hands together, eyes closed. Say these words after me as you listen. Dear Jesus, I want to thank you for this day. I want to thank you for my life. And I want to thank you that you have made me glad in your presence. I want to thank you, God, for everyone else, for all my friends, for my family, for my sisters and brothers, for my mommy and daddy. I want to thank you for loving me. Dear Jesus, I want to ask you to forgive me for all the things that I have not done well. I want to ask that you forgive me for disobeying my parents. Forgive me, Jesus, for not listening to my mommy and daddy. Forgive me, God, for not reading my books. Forgive me, God, for not reading my Bible. Forgive me, Jesus, for not praying to you all the time. Father, we pray and we hand over our requests to you. Lord, we pray for our teachers, for our fellow pupils who are not in school, who are staying at home. Lord, we pray that you be with them and you protect them. And Father, we pray for all the children, for all the families in Uganda and in the whole world that were affected by coronavirus. We pray, O oh God, that those that were affected, you will heal them in Jesus' name. And we pray, O oh God, for those people that are not well. We remember our friend Zion, who is not well, who is going for his surgery. Lord, we pray that you will heal him. And we pray for a success in the surgery. We pray that you bless the doctors and you give them wisdom. And we also remember our friend Emmanuel, who is having a brain tumor. Lord, we pray that you heal him and you make him alive again. And he will praise and rejoice in your name. Father, we we pray that you make us well-behaved children, that we will listen to our parents, we will not disobey, we will not be rude to our friends, we will not be rude to our neighbors, we will be cheerful and happy children in your presence. We pray, oh God, that you help us be reading our Bibles all the time, you help us 
help our parents with the house chores. You help us, oh God, to have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in whatever we do, even when we are reading our books, preparing for school. We pray, oh God, that you protect us, protect our teachers, protect our parents, protect our families, and all our friends. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And I want to wish a very big happy birthday to all the babies, to all the children that were born in the month of June. Continue praying for your friends. Continue praying for one another. And the Lord loves you. God bless you and stay safe. Shalom. I take the privilege and opportunity to just come and talk to you about the importance of altar, but especially family altars to the benefits of the children. I have, the time I've been born again, I've been privileged, and especially now that I'm a father, to be able to initiate and start a family altar in my family. But one of the things I've come to understand, I know most of us probably may be asking, what is an altar? An altar is, is the time space and a place where you choose to meet God from. You probably also be asking why a place and a time when God is all-knowing and everywhere. But the Bible says in Genesis and God was coming to meet uh, Adam in the cool of the day. That means that there was a place that had stationed together to always meet. Altars are, are important. Altars define destinies of families and also children. So when we're talking about altar, we're talking about we're dealing with life, we're dealing with destinies, we're dealing with the future. So we must understand that it's important as families for us to be able to inculcate a culture of, des of, of, of altars to the children. Why are altars important to the children? The Bible says, teach a child in the way he should go that when he grows up he may not depart from it. One of the things that, and the benefits that altars or family altars do to the children is that number one, they define the God of the family. Most families have gods. We grew up seeing our family members, our, our, our relatives, practicing witchcraft and all those things. And we grew up knowing that those are our gods. So we are in a dispensation when children of children in our families must understand who our God is. So altars help us to know or to let the children know who our God is. Like Joseph said, but I and my house, we shall serve the Lord. So we must come to a place where we make 
altars as a place for children to know that we have a God up there, not in a God that we other people serve, but our God as a family. Number two, altars help us to teach our children to worship God. It's a place of teaching children to worship God. If children are going to learn to worship, it's not only in church. You see, if you do not have a family altar and you wait for your children to see worship or to learn worship in church, then they will know that the God is in church, he's not in their home. So family altars inculcate that understanding that children know that God is in this place and we must worship him. Sometimes our children misbehave in our homes and they behave well in church because of that understanding. They think God is in church and is not in home. So when we put up family altars, children will understand that even in their home, there is a God and they must worship him in their actions, in their attitudes, in their words. The other bit that we, we, we teach children through altars is that children learn from the place of altar a, a point of sacrifice. Let me tell you, it takes discipline for you to maintain an altar in the home. And therefore, one of the most important bit about family altar that children are able to be able to choose a priority beyond the pleasure. They are able to say now it's time for altar. No matter what I'm doing, whether TV is on, I switch it off and I make sure that it's time for God. Teaching them a principle, God first. So altars are important. I said, number one, they teach our children who our God is. Number two, they teach our children to worship God. Number three, they also Choose, make children to choose the best priority, God above everything else. And as I wind up, listen to me. Children, remember, learn from what you do. When we have family altars, our children will learn from us how we worship. And this must be inclusive of our, the father and mother. That's in case the family is complete. But if it's not, the parent of that home must lead by example. What you do in the place of worship is what the children will learn from. What you do in the place of altar is what the children are going to do. And that's why it's important for us as parents, wherever you are, please, let's get back to the place of altar. From the place of altar, we are able to encounter attack or counter whatever the world is teaching people out there. The world is crazy, and you can only answer tough questions of our children from the place of altar. May the Lord bless you as you strengthen or as you establish the family altar. Love you all. Well, children, thank you for joining us today on a lesson about prayer. I believe we have learned a lot. It means that we are not going to forget to pray when we are going to have food, in the morning when we wake up, we're not going to forget to pray even before we go to bed. We shall always pray because prayer is good and it is talking to God all the time.